Hello and welcome to a Final Cut Pro episode of Apple A Day. Today I'm going to show you how to use drop zones in Final Cut Pro specifically for placing video clips within these drop zones. I made a simple slideshow using Apple Motion. It contains five drop zones and I published it as a Final Cut generator. So I'm in Final Cut Pro right now. I've got a project open. I'm just going to go over to generators by pressing command option one. And here I have a category already selected called Apple A Day. And inside Apple A Day, I have my sample slideshow template. I'm just going to drag this out of my project storyline. I'll also zoom to fit by pressing Shift Z. And over on the right, in the inspector, you can see the five drop zones as published parameters from the Apple Motion template. And if I play this back, you can see that it's a really simple slideshow where the camera moves from drop zone to drop zone. So if you wanted still images or photos to appear in each of these drop zones, that's really easy. I'll go back to my library by pressing Command-1, and all you have to do is drag the photos into each drop zone over in the inspector. I'll do that right now. I've got five photos I've already prepared, photo one through five, and I'll drag photo one into drop zone one. And photo two into drop zone two, and so on. If I scrub through the timeline, you can see all the photos display properly in each drop zone throughout the slideshow. It works perfectly and it's super easy to do. The problem arises when you want to place video clips into the drop zones. You can either pull segments from a longer video file, or you could have a pre-rendered video clip like this one, which is a five second clip. If I place this into drop zone one and play it back, it seems to work just fine. You can see the video playing within the drop zone. However, this is only working simply because the drop zone is near the beginning of the template. Before I move on, I'm just going to clear out each one of these drop zone sources by pressing the X icon in the inspector. Okay, so if the clips are pulled from a longer video file, one approach is to select the drop zone. I'll click on drop zone four, and that will open the drop zone editor right here. And then I'm going to select the video file I want to use. I'll pick full length video two, and then I'll just click on a random frame that will mark the starting point of the video for this drop zone. But what is happening here? This mini viewer on the right is blank. Well, this viewer displays the current playhead frame. And right now that playhead is at the beginning of the template where it's just black, there's nothing there. The idea is to position the playhead to a point when the drop zone is visible, in this case, drop zone four. So I need to scrub ahead so I can see drop zone four. Now, unfortunately I can't do that while I'm in this edit mode. So I have to cancel out of here first. Then I'm going to grab that playhead and I'm going to move it over to drop zone four. There's one, two, three, and four. Now I'll position it right to the point where it initially fills the viewer. Okay, so now I'll select drop zone four again. It opens up the editor. I'll go back to full length video two and click on a random frame again. So the right viewer shows me what is at the current playhead. So right here. Now the left viewer is when the video starts to play. However, this is relative to the start of the template, meaning that this frame here is what plays way over at the beginning of the template. Now, as you can imagine, this is very tough to determine the video which will actually play when the drop zone appears, because when you're selecting a starting point from the full length video, you're selecting what appears right here, not what appears in the playhead area. You have to anticipate many seconds prior. Well, in this example, it looks like it's about 12 seconds. So whatever I click on here is actually 12 seconds prior to what appears in the drop zone. I rarely use this method as I find it incredibly frustrating. So I'm gonna show you a better, more precise way momentarily. In any case, let's play this back so we can see the results. I'll click on apply clip and I'll just move the playhead back prior to where that drop zone appears and press play and it's working, it's playing the video. I'll just clear that drop zone. Another approach is to pull a segment from a longer video file onto your timeline and then create a compound clip. Within full length video one, I've already marked in and out points to save time. I'll just add this to my project storyline by pressing Q. You then have to save this as a compound clip before you can use it since you can't drag a clip from the storyline 
onto a drop zone. I'll just do that right now. I can right click and choose Create Compound Clip, or I can press Option G. I'll name this Clip 1, and you can see it shows up in the library right here. I'm going to delete this from the storyline. I'm going to grab Clip 1 and drag it onto Drop Zone 1. If I play this back, it works just as well as the five second clip example, so, so far so good. The problems occur when the starting point of the drop zone is not at the beginning of the template. So let's put this five second clip into drop zone three and the new compound clip we just created, clip one, into drop zone four. I'll also clear out drop zone one. Now if I scrub through, the videos are not playing, I just see still images. As stated earlier, that's because any video clip you add to a template's drop zone starts playing from the beginning of the template, not from where the drop zone first appears. The reason for the still image is because Final Cut Pro will display the last frame of a video clip in a drop zone if the video is too short and there is nothing else to play. I'll show you how you can fix this. First, I'll clear these drop zones out again. I'll start with the five second clip. First, I'm gonna find the point in the timeline where I want this clip to start playing. I'm gonna put this in drop zone three, so I'll move the playhead until drop zone three first appears in the viewer. I'll select the clip from the library, and I'll press Q to add it to the storyline. So right now, the clip is positioned to play when this drop zone appears on screen. So the idea is to make a compound clip that is this long, from the start of the template to when the drop zone is finished playing. So we need to fill this area here with a slug or a gap clip before we can create the compound clip. Now the magnetic timeline makes this a bit more challenging, but we can do it in a few steps. We first need to convert this clip to its own storyline. I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna press Command G to convert it to a storyline. Then I need to select that storyline and make sure the playhead is at the beginning. We want to add a gap clip at this position and we can do that by pressing Option W. Now, of course, this bumps the video, so we want to drag the storyline back so that the video starts at the playhead position. So I'm gonna pick the storyline up and drag it and snap it to where the video starts. And then simply drag the gap clip to the beginning of the template. And that's it. We just have to select these two clips, press Option G to create a compound clip, which I will call Clip 2. Delete this from the storyline. And now I can take clip two and add it to drop zone three. If I play this back, it works great. Video is playing. Now let's try it with a clip from the full length video. Again, I will find the position of the first frame of drop zone four to appear on screen. Right there, you can just see a little sliver of it. I'll select full length video one I'll press Q to add it to the storyline. Now, because this is from a larger video, I'm just gonna simply extend the clip back to the beginning of the template. This isn't an issue because this footage here will never be displayed. If there isn't enough video, then you'll need to add a gap clip as we did before to fill in the space. I still have to save this as a compound clip though, so I'll select it and press Option G and name it Clip 3. Delete it from the storyline, and then drag clip three into drop zone four. I'll play this back, and what happened here? It is still frozen. While this has happened because we were already messing around with drop zone four, a way to fix this is to select drop zone four to bring up the editor, and go over to the library and choose clip three, and simply click on the first frame up here and that forces it to reset itself. Press apply clip, and it plays just fine. Now that extra step wouldn't normally be necessary if you're placing a video onto a drop zone for the first time. Okay, so I know that's a lot of steps, especially when you have to add the gap clip, but this is a lot easier to change if you need to make updates. You can just go to the compound clip and adjust the video as needed. You can make edits there as well, and the edited segments will appear in the drop zone. I find this technique to be a heck of a lot easier in the long run. Well, that's it for today. I hope this was valuable. Thanks as always for watching. I'm John Martins. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.